And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather, the Smash News Network, etc. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations on realizing our channel exists. Let's take a look at some spaced out imagery of the closest star. Congratulations, stargazers, on finding our channel. Nobody else is doing what we do, probably because they can't. But in any case, they certainly don't. We did see a Type 2 radio burst. And there is a coronal mass ejection currently unfolding. We've got some missing data as well. We'll get to it. Here's a colorized magnetogram. Area to watch mainly is this sunspot down here. Also this one up here. The only two currently named sunspot groups. We've got another one forming down here in the southeast. That magnetogram is from the SDO and so is this. This is a composite image with ionized iron and ionized helium showing up. 211 and 171 angstroms, those are ionized iron UV spectra. 304 angstroms is ionized helium UV spectra. Composite imagery from the SDO browse data feature. Let's take a look at the viewpoint from the ground point one real quick, where we've got two coronagraphs. We do see some ejecta here emerging from the lower right portion of the coronagraph here on the C2. You can barely see it on the C3, but there is some ejecta there. We could see some additional Earth-facing ejecta. We'll have to wait to see more data. Perhaps we'll make another video later in the day about that. So here's the NASA GOES-16 SUVI imagery from a different uh, geosynchronous satellite here, as opposed to the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Great crown, uh, great prominence there in the uh, northwestern limb, as well as some activity rising in the eastern limb. And we've got some geomagnetic storms forecasted for early in the day Monday. Also, let's talk about the radio flux. The upper chromosphere and the lower corona emit radio frequency, electromagnetic radiation, in the form of the 10.7 centimeter radio flux. It's dropped down to 88. Here's a one-year chart. The black line is the radio flux. The red line is the sunspot number. That's from solon.info slash solar. And here you can see this latest geomagnetic storm forecast for late in the day on Sunday and early in the day on Monday. So a G2 KP6 event forecasted here as a result of, quote, anticipated influence from a positive polarity coronal hole high-speed stream with potential transient influence on 27 September. That's the NOAA forecast. I won't argue. Let's take a look at global seismicity real quick. Here's the 90-day bar graph, the convenient visual analysis from Volcano Discovery. Here's the USGS map. The largest quake of the past 24 was the 6.1 in the Aleutian Islands. That occurred at 11.52 Universal Time yesterday on September 24th. So nothing else in the 6 plus magnitude range except for that Aleutian Islands quake. We did see several in the 5 range, like this 5.4 southeast of India. Nevada saw a 3.1. Quite a few quakes in the U.S. here. We won't really worry about those. They're not big enough to show up on our list. Fiji saw a 4.2 at over 500 kilometers depth. And I'm just letting the list scroll here. Please leave us a comment if we miss anything. There's a 5.1 in the Eastern Caribbean and a 5.8 South of Africa there. South of Africa near the African Antarctican plate boundary. Let's just zoom in real quick on the US here for all of our American viewers. There's where the quakes have been occurring in the US. No major quakes. On that list, let's look at volcanoes. We've got at least one new one showing up on the list here that I've never heard of. Starting out the list with La Palma, the famous Canary Islands volcano. It's producing a 10,000-foot ash plume as it explodes and lava 
flows toward the ocean. Karimsky on the Kamchatka Peninsula also exploding 10,000-foot ash plume there. Subinosejima, 8,000-foot ash plume there. Langila, now back on the list. The Papua New Guinean island of New Britain, seeing explosive activity on a 7,000-foot ash plume produced by Langila. Samisa Pochnoi, volcanic ash report not provided. And Novarupta on the Alaskan Peninsula now producing a 5,000-foot plume of volcanic ash as it explodes. Fuego exploding down in Guatemala, 15,000-foot ash plume there. Revenador exploding in Ecuador, 15,000-foot ash plume from Revenador. Saab and Kaya were unable to detect. Please don't assume it's not erupting. Please don't assume it's not erupting and decide to pull vault to Caldera. That could be unhelpful. We need the views on YouTube, so make sure you don't pull vault to Caldera. This public service message brought to you at massive personal risk and expense from smashamash.com. So please support the channel. Visit our links. Pick up some merch. Maybe join the Smash team. Smashamash.com slash smash. And we put up several posts already today, some of which are for gold members, and nobody else will get to see except for our gold level Smash team members. Getting back to space data. The GO-16 and 17 are measuring magnetic fields in their geosynchronous orbit. And we're seeing rather low highs and low lows in the past 24 hours. There's a bunch of plasma headed Earth's way, and that can affect <clears throat> the measurement of the magnetic fields, which is exactly what's happening. Anyway, that's your three-day chart on the GOES magnetometers. Some spiky readings there as the sun has been sending some material in our direction. Here's the North Pole current sheet. We're looking at the heliospheric current sheet here, folks, and the polarity of it. Yesterday, I talked about how there may be a North Pole current sheet headed our way, and there it is, now showing up in the data. What a surprise. I've forecasted the magnetic behavior of the sun once again. I'm sure you won't see it on other YouTube channels because nobody else can do it. Anyway, here's the top view ecliptic plane field plot animated. Keep in mind this data is an hour and 14 minutes old and can suddenly change. And this makes it likely that the northern sunspot is going to continue to degrade or the southern one is going to continue to increase in its activity. Here's a line of sight view of the same data. It also shows a solar magnetogram. And you can see that very large magnetic region there, especially in the southern hemisphere, sunspot 2871, the star of the star in the past week. Here's the coronal hole line of sight plot. It shows you the sun's B field in blue. And you can see an uptick in coronal holes here as we forecasted as well. Yes. And we can expect to see more and more coronal holes here. Again, as forecasted. So here's one forming right around the equator. It's South Pole oriented. You'll see it here at the end of this little browse data clip. This is 193 angstrom from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. North Pole crown coronal hole also showing up there quite well defined. So here's our detected sunspot groups and flare probability. The flare probability is still quite high. <clears throat> We're keeping our coronal mass ejection watch and our solar flare watch in effect. You can see sunspot 2871 is beta gamma class. For whatever reason, these trailing umbrae decided, uh, whoever names these sunspots decided to name these as a different sunspot. I think that's the same sunspot, but in any case, we've got five named sunspot groups. 2871, 2872, 2873, 2875, and 2876, and a new group forming down here. We saw Umbre when we did show prep. We'll look at it again at the end of the video in high res. No major solar flares here over the past two days. And uh, yeah, a couple of M-class flares, the largest in months showing up both out of sunspot 2870. Well, we showed spectacular image in yesterday's video of that. Go check it out if you didn't see it. YouTube.com slash smashamash slash videos. No spikes in the proton flux. No relativistic particles from things like solar flares have struck recently. And let's move on to the real-time solar wind. Here you go. The coronal hole wind stream is continuing. It's made new highs here as it's reached all the way up to 550 plus kilometers per second. No geomagnetic storms or anything forced by that. And we've got a shifting BTBZ and a shifting phi angle. Current conditions are a 
about 6.5 protons per cubic centimeter for the solar wind density, solar wind speed, 517 kilometers per second. Here's the KP index, a measurement of global geomagnetism, currently only at 2, despite the high-speed wind. Let's take a look at the magnetohydrodynamic pressure in space. It's four hours of data here, provided by University of Michigan geospace model. It's a model on the space weather modeling framework. It's got a lot of variables to calculate the likely magnetohydrodynamic pressure. This graph is showing you nanopascals, this visualization. And we don't see any major changes in the real-time solar wind here. And we don't see any major changes in the geospace over the past four hours, the data displayed in this frame. We'll also show you ground magnetic perturbations, aka geospace delta B changes to Earth's B field. This is magnetic flux density now as opposed to magnetohydrodynamic pressure. And we can measure this a little more precisely without modeling it. This is, this is also modeled by the Space Weather Modeling Framework, but it's an earthly ground-based magnetic flux density model as opposed to magnetohydrodynamics in space. No major perturbations to Earth's B field happening recently. And here's what's going on in the solar system. This is where planets and so forth are located. We'll advance this one week. Here's where things will be in a week. As Mercury and Venus are creeping up to make another pass on Earth. Next, we'll go to in-the-sky.org to display a star chart. The ecliptic is the yellow line, the path the sun will take across the sky here in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania today. My chart is faced to the south. It also shows you the blue galactic plane and the shaded galactic disk area. For the Milky Way Galaxy, Milky Way Galaxy team for the win, let's do a cosmology segment. Which, by the way, will be a separate video released later after the Daily Space Weather. Make sure you check it out, youtube.com slash smashamash slash playlists. There are over 200 cosmology segments in our cosmology segment playlist. So that was a little tidbit from our cosmology segment. Again, make sure you check that out. It'll air after our space weather video. Next, looking at charging hazards here around the planet. Minor charging hazards here moving into the Central Pacific Ocean. Otherwise, not a lot to report on there. Here's the relativistic electron chart from the past year from Solon.info. Here's a three-day relativistic electrons as measured by the GO-16 and GO-17. And my forecast was spot on. So I talked about how this would be lower than forecasted, and you can see it's right about where I forecasted it. Because of the arrival of the coronal hole wind stream that we're currently getting, the high-speed coronal hole wind causing a dip in the electron flux, no surprise to our regular viewers or to me, again, I forecasted it. Here's Earth Van Allen belts, and we're showing distances and miles here just to show you what we're showing, which is going to be the total electron content the electrons between ground and a geosynchronous satellite. Geosynchronous satellites orbit at about 12,500 miles of altitude. And here is the total electron content between them and your GPS handset. And we're seeing a little bit of minor chaos here in the electron belts. A typical feature of high-speed coronal hole wind streams, no surprises once again to our regular viewers. And here's another diagram. Distance is shown here in kilometers. We're mainly showing this for the F layer, the layer of the ionosphere associated with this imagery. And we are seeing some high frequency anomalies here. And keep in mind, folks, the times of the equinoxes are the most geo effective times. So we see the most geomagnetic storms around the equinoxes. March is the most stormy month when it comes to geomagnetism. I'm not sure if September is second, but September is the month in which the Carrington event occurred. And happy smash timber to the smash team, to smash staff, and to all of our viewers. Here's the latest image from 11 o'clock universal time. Nothing to write home about there. Here's the anomaly map showing you departure in megahertz from the 30-day median. Some high-frequency anomalies here in uh, western 
Eastern Africa, rather, the Central Indian Ocean, as well as the Central Pacific Ocean. Some low-frequency anomalies showing up there in the Atlantic Ocean. Anyway, here's the latest image. That's also 11 o'clock Universal Time. There's the ionogram, and there is the anomaly map. Meteorology segments are awesome. Have you checked them out? There's a playlist. YouTube.com slash smash a mash slash playlist. Thanks to our BitChute subscribers and to our YouTube subscribers. Notice the way we had 782 videos. I mean, 782 views on yesterday's meteorology segment. And the day before, 1,129 videos. Despite billions of people viewing YouTube daily, we're getting many times as many views on BitChute, a platform with, I don't know, one-tenth, one-fiftieth, one-one-hundredth the subscribers of YouTube. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, folks. It must be because we don't know what we're doing as far as making content, right? Sure it is. Thanks to our Twitch followers, we'll be doing more and more live streams on Twitch and less and less live streams on YouTube. Although we will continue doing our Wednesday live streams on YouTube, so make sure you check those out. Every Wednesday afternoon around 2 p.m., we stream live. We'll be doing it again this coming Wednesday at the Smash News Network, least busted, name and news. Also, thanks to our patrons, please cancel your Patreon memberships and become members of the Smash team before October 1st. Don't get charged again because we won't be posting anything in Patreon. The Smash team is vastly superior. So here's a little tidbit of what goes on at smashamash.com slash smash team. This is going to include posts that only gold members see, so we'll just be scrolling rather quickly here. There's also a silver membership and a bronze membership. Bronze is free. Silver is $2.99 a month. Gold is $9.99 a month. There's also a paid-up option for gold members, which will entitle you to some complimentary merch. Smashamash.com slash smash team vastly superior to Patreon. And if you don't believe me, well, I'm not going to try to convince you. But I'd like to welcome you to the Neo Renaissance. Anyway, again, congratulations on realizing our channel exists. Visit our homepage, support our links, click on Smash O Merch. You may find this. Our merch page. We've sorted it in order of best selling. Your vaccination status is none of my business and mine is none of yours. Don't forget to forgive, remember, and hold accountable. Never forget, folks, to demand accountability for fraudsters. Today's featured product is the Mensa hat. And I've got one on my head right now. Reminding you to Mensa. Make Earth not suck again, since it's up to you, not giant bureaucracies that can't even do their jobs, much less get out of their own ways. Mensa, Make Earth Not Suck Again. You can find links at the homepage, smashamash.com. And once again, welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Here come our bonus features. It's the El Tai de Spain Ground Based Solar Observatory looking at 65, 62.8 angstroms, hydrogen alpha. And there's some ancient data on there. Let's just bring up the latest image. There's the latest image, all eyes on this area, as there is a coronal mass ejection and solar flare watch in effect. Let's take another look at that area. I press and refresh. And there's a full disk view in intensity gram. We do have a sunspot forming over here. That is a beta class sunspot at the moment. If it's there for 12 hours or more, it'll get a name. And I'd have to say, I think it will. And we'll press refresh on the colorized magnetogram. Possibly a sunspot forming up here as well. No umbrae yet visible there. So we may end up with like five sunspot groups named, but at least four, I think, by the end of the day today. And we'll close things out with a composite view here. This is the colorized magnetogram and ionized iron in 171 angstroms. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Press like, press subscribe, tell your friends, foes, science noobs, and science pros about the channel. And may that solar wind be at your back.